Hello and welcome. Um, I'm Ashley Bryce. I'm a disabled Air Force veteran and current cybersecurity and ops student with Savvy Coders. Uh, my background is in HR and admin, so I'm going to be transitioning into the tech and security field. Uh, I'm passionate about learning new things and completing challenges, and I believe that safeguarding client assets and information is important now more than ever. How's everybody doing? My name is Matthew Galladay. I am an Army Airborne veteran. I have a background in military operations and leadership, and I am currently enrolled at Savvy Coders in their cybersecurity and ops cohort. My name is Andrew Sherlett. I started and worked with computer repair and information technology throughout school. I am currently a student attending Savvy Coders cybersecurity program. And here's an outline of what we'll be what we will be covering with today's presentation. So first, I'm going to start off with the network topology. Um, as you can see on the left hand of the slide, this is like what our basic setup would be. You would have all your workstations and with your router into your firewall up to the internet, and then you can do all your backups and everything in the cloud. Um, there are seven types of network topology. There is point-to-point -point network topology, bus network topology, ring te network topology, star network topology, mesh network topology, tree network topology, and hybrid network topology. And in any of those, network topologies it's all used in a physical and logical arrangement of nodes and connections in the network okay. windows system administration and support um, administration and support will be addressed via active directory domain server uh, within windows server 2019 um, which andrew will now explain how to set Active Directory setup. Uh, to do this, you will install RSAT, Remote Server Administration Tool, through your Windows Server. Install ADDS, which is Active Directory on your Windows Server. You know, then you'll configure the uh, domain in the forest, configure the DNS server zones in the Active, for the Active Directory, configure users, groups, OU, and the GPO as needed. Onboarding technology needs. Uh, Matt and I are actually going to run a three-part demo. All right. Um, so first, I'm going to be running through a single local user setup. Um, so we'll be using this script here. Lines three, four, and six uh, will be tailored to each individual user. And then the password here in line five uh, will be changed by the user upon their first login. So we'll go ahead and run the script. And then here it is prompting me for um, that password in line five. We'll just go ahead and enter that. And then to make sure that it was successful, um, we'll open up settings here and see that Michael Scott has been added. And then he has also been added um, into the in the users uh, with his own individual folder. And then now Matt will show you how to demo um, or will demo for you a local user's email setup. Okay, I will be going over um, end user um, email setup automation for onboarding. As you can see, line seven through 10 is going to be your user login credentials. Um, just for presentation's sake, we are using Gmail as the source for the email to be set up on. As you can tell, the username, you have the user and then Gmail, and then you also have your password. So I'm just gonna go up here and run it. Okay, and as you can tell, it has the email account set up right here and also the password. 
and then once I push enter again, it takes a second to load everything else up, but you'll see everything that has been downloaded for the end user so they can start working for the company. And there you go. Shows everything that you need to do and everything is set up for the user. And then lastly, um, I will be demoing a multi-user setup uh, for a domain using Active Directory. Um, <clears throat> So the user's information uh, is all put into a master spreadsheet right here, which is then um, downloaded into a CSV file. We just use Notepad for that. Um, and then here is that CSV file with the user's information. Uh, we are going to be uploading uh, Myrtle and Michael Scott. So I'll go here to the script. Go ahead and just run with PowerShell. And then we will go into Active Directory Domain, Users and Computers. And we will scroll down to find, we have Michael Scott and Muriel Thomas. And just to kind of give you a quick, quick peek into here, it has also uploaded um, their email. We have the address in here. Um, Let's see the account name and all of that as well. All right. And then uh, in the event of an employee termination, uh, we will implement the following checklist. Um, disable multi-factor authentication. Uh, we will also change the employee's password and disable um, Active Directory um, and 365 user accounts, uh, remove access, access to Active Directory and 365 groups, um, disable the employee's computer account, change and disable uh, any application level passwords and accounts, uh, set up email forwarding to the employee's direct manager, and then lastly, recover any assigned equipment such as laptops, cell phones, etc. For endpoint security and backups, uh, we will install and configure antivirus softwares, examples as McAfee, Norton, Avira, and Avast. Restrict access to unneeded applications and websites. Install VPN services onto the system that mandate the use of remote work. Examples are NordVPN and ExpressVPN. Limit or disable file sharing capabilities and enable automatic system and software updates. And for this, I have a demo for a backup strip. Are you going to demo that? Yes. Okay. Sorry, my screen wasn't loading fast. Oh, we have this script. Um, pretty much, it will ask you right here. Do you have a, a source for the folder you want to back up? I just run this. And for demo purposes, I have. A source here on my desktop for this folder. You continue. You can name your backup. If you have a specified place you like this to end up, you can continue with Y. If not, you can click no for the, def the default location for your backups. This so will click no. And it's sent to your backup folder, which I have here and is now in here with the name and the a date appended to the end of it. Now I'll already demoing how to do remote access or desktop access.
for this, I'll be connecting to the our Linux computers, our lab PCs. You'll just enter the computer's IPv4, IPv4 address right here, which is this right here. You'll click connect. This worked right before the presentation. So we can go. We can go ahead if you want to, Andrew. Just keep moving forward. I think the screen sharing as well as might be blocking things up too. Possibly. Okay, I'll be going over um, how to basically set up um, Windows File Server. Uh, first, you're going to go to Launch Server Manager, and then you're going to go to Add Roles and Features, and then you're going to select the installation type, which will be role-based or feature-based. Um, then you're going to select your destination server, then select the server roles, select the required features as ADDS and ADLDS tools, confirm the installation selections, check the installation progress, which is under the results panel, and then you're going to view the installed tools after the completion of installation. And then after um, successful installation, you can see the Active Directory management tools under the tools menu in the server manager. Right. Network usability and security. Um, we're going to go about this quite a few ways. Um, first, we're going to restrict access. Um, we're going to restrict user access uh, by only allowing users to have enough access to complete their jobs. Um, Multi-factor authentication. Uh, we'll be utilizing multi-factor or multi-factor authentication. Um, protocols via PKIs. Um, so we'll be using PKIs rather than passwords to access protocols, um, such as SSH. Um, we'll also be utilizing firewalls. Um, and then firewalls can also be complemented um, by intrusion detection and other security mechanisms um, that can actively monitor inbound and outbound uh, network traffic. Um, patches and updates. Ensuring that operating systems, software, applications, um, they're all updated with the latest patches and updates. And then employee education, which is probably the most important, um, educating employees and making sure that they, they're aware of and they can identify um, risks uh, such as, you know, phishing emails and stuff. Okay, and for all our support engagements, um, we're going to use the Spiceworks Help Desk. Um, as you can see over here in the right side, you have your incoming for when your first ticket comes in with the issue, and then it starts escalating from there. You have your routing triggers, which whichever route your ticket decides to go, it'll go to the respectable personnel, and then at the end, you can see all your views of what tickets are finished, what tickets are still in progress, and what are new tickets as well. Uh, for cloud service ports, we will deploy AWS, Amazon Web Services. And for them, we require secure passwords for the access and allow for the fewest services as possible for the associate to be successful for security. And OneDrive for easy file sharing between associates and across company computers. And remote access does not allow me to do it when I'm screen sharing. All right. Any questions? All right, guys. 
It was better. Okay. Yeah, it was better. Well, it's not. Well, at least we know his won't work with the screen sharing. So I know. I was like, ah. Oh. I'm wondering if you can take a picture of it, like after it loads, and just throw it in a like throw it on the little the freaking slide, basically. Be like, it doesn't work when we're sharing the screen, but as you can see, it does connect. Properly. What's going on? Yeah, we can. We finished, but now we're we're having some ideas too. Uh, what do you, I don't know, what do you think about that, Andrew? You're just taking a picture and 